What up guys, Shredded Otaku here. So today I'm just gonna kinda show off my collection, give a little bit of insight as to what it's like to collect, uh, mostly Nintendo games. Um, maybe give a little bit of insight and tips and tricks that you can use to avoid pitfalls when starting a, a large collection or a relatively large collection. I'm kinda hesitant to call this a tour because it's a very small one bedroom apartment, but it works for us right now. Um, really quick guys, if you like content like this, please uh, hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps a lot. Uh, feel free to comment below. Anything that could help with the algorithm would really be awesome to help me get this channel started. All right guys, let's check it out. So right away, as I said, it's a pretty small and cozy space. With that said, we've packed quite a bit of cool stuff in here. Um, if you look around, a lot of it is like figures. I've always kind of taken to figures more than anything else, but I've definitely managed to keep quite a few games over the years. Uh, we, you know, we collect a bit of everything, so you'll see some Pokemon cards, manga. Some of my favorite items are just like retail signs that I've snagged from stores, uh, just for free. Uh, over here we've got some big box games. I'm really, really keen on those big Nintendo Switch boxes. I just think they look nice, so I always put them on display. Over here we've got some decoration items that actually the girlfriend picked out. Like, I never would have thought a Game Boy fridge would look so damn cool, but I'm glad we have it. Uh, I do have a Series X. Uh, one thing I want to say is like I'm not an only a Nintendo gamer, just mainly that's all I collect. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that, but as you can see, I'm pretty keen on picking up just about every Switch title I want. Now, I think my favorite thing to collect is uh, Amiibos. And some people might cringe at that, but to me, I just think they're cool. I mean, they look cool, obviously, but also just the fact that I can own all of them and I don't feel guilty with them just kind of sitting on the shelf. You know, as we grow older, we can't always play all our games, but man, just looking at these and like thinking about the uh, Super Smash Brothers Melee uh, trophy collection system. And just, I remember as a kid always wanting to have all those trophies. Now I'm 30 and I do, I guess, which is, you know, one thing or another. In here we've got uh, mostly handheld titles that I kind of put in the corner by the bed. Uh, recently I've been picking up a lot of 3DS games. There's a number of reasons for that, but I just feel like that's a console that I'll look back on and really enjoy. Um, the girlfriend is mostly the one that picks up the pops. I felt like if I went down that rabbit hole, I'd never come back, but we've gotten quite a few of those. Some more retail signs, you know, things that I've, again, been able to pick up for free just by making friends. In here uh, is a bunch of games that I can't fit on the shelves and other consoles. Um, this is kind of like what I consider to be my working sets of retro stuff. And I actually intended for this to be mostly just a cozy space uh, for both of us to have um, kind of our own little setups. It's pretty sweet for just like late night gaming on something older. Uh, technically with the Switch Online, I can play every Nintendo console on here, so that's pretty cool. And the girlfriend can play her Xbox when she wants to do Overwatch, and that's something that I really enjoy. Again, it's not like a ton of games, you know, at least on display, but I feel like if I'm ever going to pick up and play any of these games, you know, these are going to be the ones that I go to. So I tend to just kind of have everything else either tucked away, uh, you know, again, under the bed, in the closet, in case I ever do want them, but chances are they'll get sold. Now, one cool thing about this place is that I kind of put a bunch of LEDs up and it kind of looks really dope at night. <laughs> you know, turning on all these lights and like really kind of giving it that modern vibe kind of gives it a whole new look, um, especially when it's hot outside, just shutting the blinds and doing this as well. It's, it's pretty sick. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it, guys. Now, I did mention that I would kind of give some tips and not just show off a bunch of stuff. Uh, one thing that I'll say is that nowadays, collecting these games, it can be really expensive. Um, and we really live in a time where video games are kind of at the peak of their market. And some people will look at me and be like, whoa, don't say that. Um, at least the ones that are in the retro community. But last year with the pandemic, like we really saw video games just explode in popularity and everyone was home gaming. Um, the, you know, collecting games is kind of like timing the stock market. You can't, I mean, not, you can't time it, right? Um, but there are better times to buy than others. You know, you don't want to buy stocks when everything has been in a bull run for two years like 
Anyway, um, video games are the same way. Uh, the Amiibos, for example, you know, I bought 90% of those uh, back in like 2016 when people had kind of gotten done playing Super Smash Bros. And everyone just had these figures sitting around wondering what they're gonna do with them. I went on like Mercari and eBay and stuff. I bought a lot of them loose, some of them for like $4. I think the most I paid at the time, I imported a Corrin Player 2 Amiibo. I, you know, I'm not gonna take it out and show it off. But anyone that's watching that knows what that is, it's a super expensive Amiibo figure now. And I was kind of like, man, 40 bucks? Like these guys are, these guys are tripping. At the time, right? That was the most expensive I paid. Now that Corrin is worth a couple hundred, as are a lot of the other ones, right? So you know, it's kind of just like a lesson to be learned. Like there's a good time to collect everything. Um, generally speaking, like the last console, like the previous console from the generation that's current, um, for example, like right now, the Wii U um, is a good console to collect for because a lot of those titles people just have sitting around and they don't know what to do with them. Um, especially with the Wii U eShop closing, topic for another video, it's always a good time to pick those ones up. Uh, when things are modern, um, you know, it, it's, it's hot and cold. If you buy, you know, uh, Nintendo Switch games off, uh, you know, from GameStop, then you're gonna get five bucks off because they're still new, they're still playable, everybody's got that console, it's current. Um, but if you go on Mercari or, you know, any marketplace app that you might have, you'll see a lot of people pick these games up and play them for a week or two and not really want them anymore. So you might get them for half off. Um, if you're looking to grow a collection, I highly suggest doing that. Um, going way back in time to like the really classic and, and super retro stuff like the 64 or uh, you know the Super Nintendo, that gets super complicated because uh, a lot of those titles just aren't gonna get remade or probably won't. So, uh, you know, the only way to properly play them is with that source of media. And as such, the price has gone up exponentially. Um, you know, the same rule applies there. When games are a little bit less popular, uh, they tend to be a little bit easier to pick up. But generally speaking, like, there are super, super rare ones, like Chrono, if you want a Chrono Trigger in box, for example, that guy that owns it doesn't care. Like, you're gonna, you're gonna pay a, a super pretty penny. So like hold off for those I always say and uh, you know maybe at some point in your life you want to pick it up. I don't recommend anyone going into collecting and just trying to get everything they want because your your opinions are gonna change and like what you want. At one point I thought I needed to have every Legend of Zelda game collector in box and you know at some point maybe I'd like to have that but like it's not worth the price for me right now. Um, but, you know, with that said, if I went to a, a game convention and I saw some of them sitting right in front of me, I'd probably take that as a sign and pick it up. Um, I feel like as a collector, you know, if you have that collector bug, um, you're never going to be done. You're never going to complete your set, you know, as much as you might think you are. Like this next, these next couple games and then I'm done with GameCube. You're never done, dude. Like, so don't go down that rabbit hole. Just pick up what feels right at the time, um, even if you're not going to play it, like at least pick up to uh, to like a mo have some moderation, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, another cool trick that I learned over the years is like when you go to garage sales and stuff and you pick up loose copies of games um, and you're like, man, this would look cool on the shelf. Um, I've really taken to making my own game cases for some of the ones that are kind of expensive. Um, and this is another topic where some collectors will look at me and be you know, mortified at what I've done. But I think it's a really cool uh, little tidbit of info that might save you quite a bit of money. Uh, you know, I have some that I've done, I actually did this one earlier today, that look, you know, if I showed you this and I told you it was real, you, you'd probably believe me, you know, honestly. I would never do that. But um, I've gotten pretty good at making them. That, you know, that said, I have some that I've made which kind of just make me feel sad when I look at them. But at the same time, like I didn't pay $20 just to get the box after I found the loose disc for free. So I think it's a pretty cool tip. Um, you know, another tip that I would give would just be to have fun. <laughs> you know, don't ever let collecting become like some weird flex that you do. Cause at the end of the day, like this stuff is, it's stuff, um, but it's awesome to have. You know, people ask me why I keep collecting. And for me, I think it's just like a fun distraction from the crazy world we live in today. Um, and that's all I ever wanted to be, you know? Uh, I think that when we start to get into like the, like, and this sounds weird to uh, the casual viewers watching this, but you know, there's some collectors out there that almost get competitive with it. And I just, I feel like that's kind of weird, man. Like I want this hobby to be fun again, not based in value, you know, monetary wise, you know, just in what it means to you personally. Um, 
So yeah, what are your guys' thoughts on collecting? Um, have you ever thought about collecting video games or like, is it just like a super weird thing that you think is uh, way too niche and hard to understand? Uh, comment below and like tell me what you think and also just like what you think of the setup. Maybe give me some, you know, uh, inspire me to do something new. Uh, it's kind of been like this for a while. Anyway guys, again, if you enjoyed, if you, <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, I'll try not to stutter too much next time. Stinker, bud. <laughs>